All right, we're back with episode 13, the lucky 13. We have a special guest. You see him down in the corner there. Say hi to Mr. Jeff Hall, everybody. How Hello, are you? Jeffrey. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I'm Mike. I'm Fred. I'm Rob. And he's Jeff. And, and I'm Jeff, the special guest. Yeah, and he's at yeah. Comerica Park. So he's doing his uh, streaming from Comerica Park. Uh, looks like a pretty good. Who's up to bat, Jeff? Uh, Cabrera's up to bat. Uh, Jack Morris just went to get another beer. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought that was a really Rodriguez at bat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bird, the bird Fidrich so is underneath the dirt at home plate. Fidrich is under the dirt. There you go. All right. Who wants to kick us off with a topic? Well, Robbie's got some breaking news. I oh, guess. yeah, that's right. He said he had breaking news, but. You know, even before the breaking news, I Fred was talking earlier. He's like, you know, Jeff is so stoked to come on the show. And I'm thinking, really? <laughs> Why would anybody be stoked to come on the show? And then I thought, you know, that scene in um, A Few Good Men where he says, you know, Private Santiago was due to leave on the first flight at 0600 hours AM. He didn't call a single person. He didn't write to anybody. He didn't pack a bag. And I'm thinking Jeff was the same way, right? So he's gonna come on the idiot circle. He probably didn't call anybody to tell anybody he was gonna do it. Didn't write anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Is he saying I'm going to be found dead in my bunk? I hope not. I hope no. not. I'm thinking you like said nothing to nobody. Is that true, Jeff? Oh, no, no, no. People know. People know. No, people know. This is my oh. podcast debut. I told you guys what I saw you at the uh, fish company. I listen to you guys every week. This you is a big are... moment for you? Yes. No, I just feel sorry <laughs> yes. for you, Jeff. I feel sorry you... for you. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> the bucket list. I'm sitting in my car on a Zoom call, and we're recording it. Wow. So we awesome. do have breaking news, but I want to shout out to our one of our possible sponsors. Yes. Chick-fil-A, oh. Chick-fil-A yes. I would love for Chick-fil-A to be a sponsor. Now, oh, I, I want to do this because I know Mike is a big Chick-fil-A fan. And so is Fred. Yep. And now. Hey, you know, Rob. Yeah, yeah. I know I know that uh, you're used to having things in your mouth and you'd be able to talk clearly. So I just thought I'd throw that out there too. <laughs> <laughs> seamless. This, it was seamless. This, Ruth, this is where we need help. Ruth. We're trying to go after a sponsor like Chick-fil-A. Storm the Elginac Market. There's no Chick-fil-A hardly in Michigan. And this is what we're trying to do. So, Ruth, and, we need and, you as our producer. Exactly. And we promise we will not have a show on a Sunday. That's right. No think, show on a Sunday. I think we have had a show on a Sunday. So Breaking news. Breaking news. And now I know everybody's going to be shocked by this. I got the inside tip. Wanted to bring it Just to the, the tip. Just the tip. Just yep. the tip. I'm only going to give you the tip. <laughs> Nothing else. Uh, I'll tease you with it in, out, in, out, but it'll only be the tip. Well, okay. It's like a soup can. You can Ouch. touch the sides, but you can't so touch the bottom. Is. Breaking news. Why was I excited for this? Power couple. <laughs> How, now, I know you're going to be shocked about this. This is going to be shocking to everybody on this panel. Aaron Rodgers and Shailene Woodley have broke up for the final time. <laughs> oh, God. Really? Are we sure and... it's a final time? Oh. That's it, huh? That's it. That's all I got. I'm tapped out. Well, she finally she finally wisened up and said, you know, this guy's a douchebag. So right. I yes. need to I need to distance myself from this guy. I mean, yeah, when he, especially when he just he just went to uh, officially change his name to Karen Rogers. Do, yeah. we, do we need any more drama no. about Aaron Rodgers in our lives? No. no. If I never heard his name again in my lifetime, I would be a happy man. To if I'm I know, being honest, right? I think she broke up with him because his hair was getting longer than hers, and she just yeah. didn't wouldn't have any of it. You know. 
Uh, that's, that's that's probably one of the reasons. She that's broke why. up with him because he only has one more Super Bowl than her. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, and barely. Stafford leapfrog Darren Rodgers. He's a better quarterback all time now. He's got just as many, uh, just as many Super Bowls and better stats. Yes, he does. Our Fred? boy, Shocking. our boy. Shocking, shaka Okay, see you guys later. I'm going well, to... at least she didn't shit in, on his side of the bed when she left. Like, uh, did you guys hear about Amber oh. Heard and Johnny Depp? The oh my god, Amber Let's... Turd. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> the Amber Turd. Yeah, ja- yeah, the Amber Turd and the Johnny Dump. Well, Fred <laughs> always, <laughs> Fred always said, I Fred always says i'll eat the, i'd eat the corn out of her shit now would you eat the corn out of amber heard shit that's on johnny's side of the bed or not fred that's my uh, question to you a hail to the no she's a crazy bitch she'd probably you know probably yep, be a good good run in the mm-hmm. sack you no know? thank you she'd beat the shit out of you and then beat the shit out of you okay yeah. no i'm good crazy in the head crazy in bed what do you say rob would you do the amber turd or not? Uh, no, I'm not even. I I don't even think Shailene Woodley was that hot. Now his prior girlfriend. I know I'm going off of John. Olivia Depp, Munn. The other one, the Danica Patrick. And I'm Danica Patrick. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I I drink her bath water. Yeah. Okay, that's another another Fredism. I like how you're throwing them out there, Fred. Nice job. <laughs> nice job. What say you, Jeff? I don't know. At Amber Heard, no, that is that is crazy run amok. You can't that that's actually terrible. I actually felt bad for Johnny Depp after hearing some and of that. that and that's saying something that you feel bad, yeah, you for, Johnny feel Depp. bad for Johnny Depp. <laughs> yes. A guy that's a multimillionaire a hundred times over, and I felt bad for him. That was that's terrible. No, some of the, no. I've watched some of the clips on YouTube of the trial. Her lawyers are a total fucking joke, man. Right. And his okay. are top notch and hers are a fucking joke. It's yeah. It's she, it's entertaining Ma- TV. It's like she's got Marsha Clark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> started. Yeah, and I really felt yeah. Started started, yeah, Clark. yeah and, Clark. and I really felt bad for Johnny Depp because he lost the tip of his finger. <laughs> I mean, that's damage. I mean, you know, that's damage when you're uh Using your hands uh, during some playtime. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it feels different for him now. No, know. maybe like a multi-millionaire that meets homeless guy, wacky homeless guy on the corner. I mean, yeah, that can play, weird. that can rock his ass out on on a guitar. Yeah, yeah. he uh, yeah. he's a method actor. I don't I don't know if he ever falls out of character though. He's always kind of. He's a methadone actor. Yeah. <laughs> He is a methadone actor. (laughs) Rob is fired up tonight. Yes. Yeah, he's doing good. He's doing good. Hey, we got a guest on the show. I love it, Jeff. Hey, I want to go back, though. I want to go back to your advertising song. I want to give you the Algonac Chick-fil-A link. Oh, let's see. There's a link. Oh, I love this. Is it missing? Chick-fil-A. On Hall Road is Dennis Sampier, Algonac Muskrat, class of 1990. Nice. 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 All part of our master plan to storm the Algonac market. Yeah. We run the data, Jeff. We figure doing Algonac, bringing Algonac in, we could get three, four, five, maybe six people. Uh, I'm telling you, I, I think what we need to do is we need to simulcast at Snoopy's Doghouse. Next week, let's go. Oh yeah, Fred, Fred's been wanting to do a live stream. Um, yeah. You know, if we do it from Snoopy's, we might have to bring like some breathing apparatus with us because that yeah. place still has like nicotine on the windows yeah. and shit. Yeah. Maybe some penicillin. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you find your finest men bring and women from your finest prisons right there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ooh, oh, God, that place is that's something. I mean, I thought. I thought nice. Gord's was a dive bar. Guys, but... we're trying to get the Elginac market. Let's not. Uh, oh, they're proud. Away they're proud of the. They're proud of Snoopy's, man. Yeah, we're hitting home. Back they know. Forever. They know it's a trashy uh, dive bar, and they, and they love it. And they're yeah. not going to apologize for it. 
You yep. got three. You got three Mariners right here. Tell us something like inclusive, like all you Elg Elginac guys know that maybe it'd be a secret to us Mariner people. Give us a oh. little insight. Give us a snippet. Give us oh, something. Man. Matt, well, okay, so I will, I'll throw this one at you. So you guys have the idiot circle, which is Marine City, right? Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Which everybody from Algonac went and cruised at the same time you guys yeah. were there. But on Harsons Island, we actually have the turnaround, which I don't know if any of you have ever been to, but if you, if you get off the ferry, take it to the left, go all the way to the end, it's just a turnaround. It's all beach. And, and I mean, that was every weekend there were parties there. So you had to ride the ferry out and then yep. go do the turnaround. Yep. Drive all the way. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been to San Susie's. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You go out that way, stay on that main road, and it actually takes you to a road that turns around part every Friday and Saturday parties out there. See, that was their putty gut road. That was that, their putty yeah. gut road yeah. bridge. There you go. That we did not know that. See, that's good. That's so, good information. So then one, one day when we do, we're planning on this, Jeff, tell us what you think. Next summer, maybe the summer after, when we get like four, five, six listeners, we're going to have like a <laughs> cruise downtown Marine City and party at Putty Gut. And maybe the following year, we'll do the turnaround. Harsons Island hit the turnaround. That's right. Harsons yeah, I'm Island. thinking I'm I I like to be aggressive, so I'm saying we do the Marine City on Friday night, and we do the turnaround on Saturday night. I'm saying, hey, oh. we're old guys, but I think we can string two nights together, guys. We can do that. Blowing my mind. Yeah. Huh? It's and then, my see and what then I did there. Hey, and then what we do is we find <laughs> somebody. We, get a hold of Dave Vandenbosch who's got some property and have the Gobies and um, Paul and Oates come out and, uh, and play and have a big old bash out there. Will they come out for two or four listeners? Uh, oh, yeah. if we think. pay them. <laughs> yeah. If you pay them in advance, I'm sure they will. Hey, it's all money to them. They don't care. I mean, if I you're mean, a musician, okay you don't give a shit it. if you play with. They realize the epic value, how low we are. You know, okay, well, if it's only going to be four or five, maybe it's going to be a uh, shiner that plays. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Meldon Brothers, the Meldrum Brothers. Yeah, that no. maybe they'll play at the turnaround. Hey. Oh yeah, they're oh. At the tur yeah. All right. I also, like Chris Meldrum, class of 1990, with Dennis Sampier, who owns Chick Fil A. Same See, class. Yeah, same class. That's a callback. Man, they call that a callback, guys. What a, <laughs> what, what a successful class that was at Algonac. Look at the new I guys mean. teaching us shit. We, don't yeah. know. <laughs> we have no clue what the fuck's going on. <laughs> we don't on. even know. We're we're just, we My just mind's winging. blown. <laughs> yeah. We just well, I, will I will tell you another one. And this is okay. more football related. Fred, you played football. Mike, did you guys play football or no? No. 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 And I, I did not play football either. So, I, But I'm going to say 87. I believe Marine City beat Algonac 71 to 8. That was uh, our junior year. Okay. So, so it was one of our low scoring games against you. Yeah. Yeah. 71 to 8. Yeah. <laughs> so now the following year, which I'm, so I'm guessing that, that our, our senior year. Seven. Yeah. So 87 it was. The week we played uh, Marine City, Ron Allen, who was the first year football coach, had helmets made up with 71 to 8 on them and made the team wear those helmets all week, 71 to 8, to remind them how bad Marine City beat Algonac. And I believe in 87, Algonac won 12 to nothing. Wow. I love wow. that story, though. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not good for us on the Marine well, City side, but. I do well, like it. Algonac, Algonac also beat Marysville that year, too. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Howie, six. Howie McCallum. Yeah. Seven to nice. six. And then what, but, what's happened since then, Jeff? Do you know the stats not, since then? <laughs> not much. Not much. Let's, let's, stick, let's stick to when we were in school, okay. guys. Yeah, okay. All mind. right. All right. To be inclusive to the Algonac market. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> 
So hey, Jeffrey, Jeff, you got to have a topic for us, right? Yes, Je topic. Jeffrey's got to have a couple topics for He's us. I'm sure. Well, let's go back. So I got Comerica in the background. Fred, I, I sent you the information. Yeah. So obviously Cabrera gets his three thousand hit. Is what's he at? Three three thousand and three now? Yes. Okay. Now yes. here's my question for everybody. I'm, who's the next guy that's gonna get to three thousand hits? Pujols. He already has three thousand. Oh, well, he's yeah. over. Uh, Good guess though, Rob. <laughs> the closest one I could think of because I don't think there's another guy close right now. No, there isn't. Uh, the, the next closest guy is Oh, I know who it is. He's got two, he's got eighteen hundred uh trout. No, it's Joey Votto. He's got 2,035 hits. How old but is he? He's, he's in his uh, 16th year. Six so he's not years. getting there. Wow. Well, how, so how many my, years has Cabrera been in so the league? 32. 20. 20 so years? 20, 20 oh, yeah. years old. No, no I'm he, saying Trout's like 32 years old. No, no, I'm not talking about age anything. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm, yeah. That's uh, 20 is a... Uh, how many uh, years he's been in the league? Okay. Yeah. What, why do you think it is that we don't have guys that are hitting? Well, I, I can tell good, you. That's a good point. Well, I can tell you, you know, from, from you know, like when you start looking at the 60s and the 70s, um, first of all, number one, uh, the shift was not allowed. Oh, yeah. Because um, there's a lot of guys that, I mean, Cabrera, and a, a bunch of Victor Martinez would have more hits. Um, you know, I mean, there's a, the shift is really changing there and they're going to get rid of the shift here shortly. Yeah. Um, but in my opinion, the three guys that have a chance to get are Jose Altuve. Oh yeah. Bry Bryce Harper yeah. and, and, and Mike Trout. Those are the three yeah. guys that yeah. I think that if they can stay healthy, um, I think they can do it. Um, what about Vlad, Fred? Is it just all power with Vlad? Will he ever be able to get to numbers like that? Vlad Guerrero Jr. If he can stay yeah. healthy, um, see, I, the thing is, is he's right now he's all about power. Yeah. Um, but as he as he starts to get a few more years and he starts taking the ball to the opposite field, he could get there. But I. I would probably say he's not the type of hitter that's going to be able to do that. So I would say no, Rob. Yeah. I like him no. though. I think he's a good oh, yeah, player. Yeah. He's, a, yeah. he's exciting to watch. And so is yeah, Dante Pichette no Jr. So the, where's Robinson Cano? What do you think about Machado though? I think Machado might Machado? have the best of all of them. Well, he, well, here, here's the thing about Machado. Machado right now, He's in his 11th year, and he's only got 1445 as far as hits are concerned. That's pretty good. Okay. So that means he needs another 1,500, you know, 1,600 hits. Yeah. Okay. But he's, he's, in his, he's in his 11th year, and he's sitting at number 20 right now. Um, he could, but again, he, he's a, another guy that's got to stay healthy. Um, you know, Bryce Harper is one of those guys that, you know, sprays the ball. And, and he hit also hits with power. Altuve's that, you know, kind of like the Ichiro type guy, yeah, yeah. you know, sprays the ball around, you, you know, he'll give you, he'll give you good numbers. I didn't um, think he could spray anything on the ball in, in baseball, but. No. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. You asked about Robin, Robinson Cano. He's yeah, got. What about Cano? What about got, Robin Yount? Let's talk yeah. about him. Yeah, he's got 3,000 hits. See, yeah, right now, Mike just hates this topic. He no, I don't. This. As long as You're we go back. Baseball guy. As long as we go back to the 80s, we can talk about baseball. Yeah. <laughs> or if if you pronounce his name like George Cal, Robin Young. Young. Yeah. Young. Yeah. 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 Two Utes. Two what? Two what? Two youths. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so Robinson Cano has got two thousand six hundred and thirty-one hits. I don't, and I don't know if he's playing with Seattle. I don't know if he's playing. I have no idea. And here's the other thing that you said about the other guys, the top three that you said could have a chance. The one thing that they do need to do for those guys would have to go probably to the American League and be a DH for a while. 
because that's how you're well, going to extend well, your life. Well, to... well, the DH is available now in the in National League. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so we might see a surge now again in, you know. Later well, you, 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 could see, you could see some of these players end up uh, leave, not being in the field and then, and then being DHs and, favorite, and kind of bouncing right? around. Can you look up what um, – see, here's what I think about some power hitters. When they get older, they get a little more mature at the plate. They take their time and can extend hits later years than they did in their earlier mm -hmm. career. You, what, what do you think about that? Is that a, is that something that happens with a lot of these guys? A lot of these guys learn how to hit the right way, and and it's 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 using the whole ballpark. If, if you're if you're a strictly a pole hitter, you're not going to hit three thousand. You're not going to get three thousand hits. Yeah, you you have to be able to spray the ball. So, as an example. Altuve, he he's 32 years old, and he has to he has to average and he has to play till 40, and he has to average 136 hits a year. To and be what able to has get he there. been averaging thus far? You know, uh, you no know, hits come. Uh, he, he's got he's got 1,700 hits. He needs and a, how many a years. I don't know. 32 figure at least. Well, so you're talking years. another eight years. Carry the four plus the yeah. three. He's got to be 170 a year, I got to think. He's got to be 175 years he, old. He's got to be yeah. 100. Rock and Marciano, Rock and yeah. 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 He kicked God. Joe Lewis's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis is 175 years old. Everybody wants to talk Joe Lewis. <laughs> Rock my side. Rock my side. Oh, uh, now, now like, here's the thing. Food. I said, Boy, what a bunch of ADD guys we got on this. I mean, the <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I, in my opinion, those are the three guys I think that have the best chance. Uh, Machado would be a dark horse, but uh, it's going to, you know, some of these guys, it's going to take them staying healthy for eight to 10 more years and average yeah. again, anywhere from 130 to 150 hits a, a yeah. year. Yeah. So how many there's... touchdown passes you think Dwayne Haskins is going to throw this year? Craig? Well, since he's the best quarterback under six feet, um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm going to hell for that one. Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh. That's epic. <laughs> yeah, you're the one that keeps bringing it up, you friggin' atheist. <laughs> no, Fred, Fred sent a couple, Jeff, Fred sent us his text a little earlier in the week. And we, it fired us all up. I'm going to let Fred tee this up, but it's, it's a great conversation for us today. And I'll, we'll get back to you, Jeff, because I'm sure you have more topics, but this one I think is a good round the table. Yeah, this one, this one, I just flipped, I was flipping through and, and I saw this and it was the top 25 college football helmets, according to 24 seven sports. Now I'm going to start from 25 and work my way up. Okay. okay. Number 25 is the UCLA Bruins. Yeah, Number no, no way that it's 25 should be no. much higher on the list. I agree. I, that's what I was going to say. Okay. So when I say the name of the, if I say a name of, when I say the name of, of the school, say if that's right or should they should be lower, um, higher, lower, stay pat, Somewhere in there. Okay. Okay. Second one, Wyoming Cowboys. Higher. Higher. Yeah. Okay. Clemson Tigers. Mm, I, I like uh, higher. I like that. I like the helmet. Okay. Number 20. Okay yeah. Number 22, Auburn. Uh, no. I mean, it's iconic, but I don't think it's a great helmet. No. Yeah. 21 is Georgia. That'd be high. Eh, that's a pretty good one. Yeah, I would say higher on that one. Okay. To me, it looks like Green Bay. Exactly. But it's black. No, don't take that in a, in a bad way. Um, black G's matter, too. Yes. Uh, number 20 is North Carolina State Wolfpack. 
It's pretty cool looking, I think. Yeah, I like it. Okay, I would have said no. Okay, okay. It's, okay. hey, it's your opinion, Jeff. <laughs> Throw it out there, man. Jeff, yeah. it doesn't Be- look like a wolf, though. <laughs> it looks like a chupacabra. I mean, it's a yeah. wild beast yeah. on that. That's oh, what wow. I like about it. Hey, yeah. hey, Jeff. Just remember, opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one, so be, be feel free. And they yeah, usually okay. stink. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Number nineteen is uh, Oklahoma Sooners. No, get the fuck out Iconic, of here. Iconic, but it doesn't really. No. Yeah, like... I agree. Uh, number eight, uh, 18, Tennessee Volunteers. I Mike's going to be all over this. He loves this. He's all Tennessee. That should be higher. Man. Higher. Yes. I like okay. the colors. Yeah. yeah, the colors are badass. I love that orange. Gotcha. Love me that orange. 17, the Iowa Hawkeyes. I like I, it. I like Iowa's. Yeah. I don't yeah. like that they're basically the Pittsburgh Steeler uniforms, but I do like the helmet and the logo is pretty damn cool. Yeah. I always laugh when a guy from Iowa gets drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers when they probably go, damn it, I wanted something <laughs> a different type of yeah. uniform. I'm going to wear this yeah. ugly ass uniform again. Right. Yes, number uh, number sixteen, uh, North Carolina uh, Tar Heels. No, I don't. Like uh, that. Lower. Yeah. No. Number fifteen, Louisville Cardinals. They change so much. I don't know what yeah. we're talking and about. And they're they were the St. Louis Cardinals, basically the St. Louis Cardinals uh, right. helmet initially. So it's fucking copycat. Right. We don't like right. that shit. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Like I, I agree. Cause, and that's the thing. They change so much. Which one are we talking about? Yeah, exactly. Great good point. Number 14, the Pitt Panthers. That's a good that's spot. A good that's a good spot for them. I, I love think the it's helmet. a good spot. Yeah, I like it right there. Yeah, I can see them being like, uh, you know, Mid- 12 or 11. Of, okay. You know, but, yeah. Okay. Pretty close. Uh, number 13, the Florida Gators. I like it should it. be higher. I think yep. they, yeah, I think that's a top 10 at least. Yeah, that should be higher. Number 12, the Oregon Ducks. Which they one? Change. Too, too exactly. many changes. It's, uh, many. To me, it's the same as Louisville. You just don't know which helmet they're going to come out with. And it's it's like a box of chocolates. Yes. You never know what you're going <laughs> to get. So I got no. five. So I got a familiar black path upon it. <laughs> Those look like comfortable that shoes. Just me out <laughs> yeah. I love you, James. Oh, here we go. AD, ADHD. Here we go. <laughs> let's let's, right. let's talk about the top 10 Forrest Gump quotes. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Number 11, Arkansas Razorbacks. I like it. Yeah, I like it. That's a good spot for that, I think. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Okay, now we're in the, the top 10. All right. Number 10, USC Trojans. Higher. Should be higher. I like, I'm not, I, I, I like them at 10. Okay. All right. How about you, Jeffrey? Top 10. It's top 10. Maybe a little higher. I guess I'd have to hear the other one, but it's top okay. 10. Okay. Number nine, Florida State Seminoles. No. Nope. No, I don't like them. Mm. No. Nope. Lower. Yeah. Florida's I, got a better helmet than Florida yeah, State. Yeah, I agree. Florida's kinda, better in Florida. State. I kind of dig. I kind of dig the the harpoon. Kind of reminds mm-hmm. me of Marine City's helmet. So yeah. But uh, okay, uh, number eight, LSU Tigers. Ooh, that is. I I do like the the helmet. I like it. It really pops. That's what's you know, cool with, about that helmet. With with oh. what's gonna what's gonna be said above them? I'm gonna say LSU needs to be higher on this list. Okay. Number seven. Texas Longhorns. That's a top, top 10. 10, but lower. Maybe mm-hmm. flip flop LSU in Texas. This one's the shocker. Number six, the Michigan Wolverines. No. Hey. Well, we know I knew you were going to say that. That should be number one. So I, it's funny. I mentioned that, you know, I said that I, I commented on this. I said, you guys lost all credibility, and, and this is a garbage thing. And some guy said, well, did you know that uh, Ohio State and Minnesota all had the winged helmets um, before Michigan did? That's not true. It's not true. Fritz Chrysler is the one who developed the the design and the art department. At one time, there was 10 teams that had them. They all got rid of them except for Michigan. There was three pro teams that had them way after Michigan developed them. But that's right. not true. Fritz Chrysler 
went to the art department to Michigan and developed that. Home. I thought so they came. Gone. I thought the wing came from Princeton. I thought it came from Delaware. No, Delaware no, was there. Del- no, they allowed, Delaware came to Michigan. And Delaware asked if they could copy the, the helmet, and that was the only team Michigan let copy yeah, after like. But they, but they, the only way they would let them do it is if, if the blue was a, a, a little bit lighter. Yeah, color. a little off. Yeah. yeah. Are we talking the blue and yellow, or are we talking about winged helmets? Because I'm I'm ninety nine point nine percent sure that Princeton had the wing helmet, and they and, they did. Okay, they did. Okay. But, but Michigan is the one that developed it. See, I thought Princeton, Princeton had didn't it have first. Them at first. Okay, I thought it, I thought they did. So okay, number five, That's Alabama. Debate, no, uh, I don't like it. No, no. it's iconic, but no. it's way down. Uh, yeah, I agree. it's uh, it's a Pop Warner football team. You know, couldn't afford real fucking uniforms, so they had to get a helmet like that. It's bullshit. Right. <laughs> plus, plus four. Plus Forrest Gump played for him. Exactly. Oh. Uh, He's That's back. not even top ten. That's. Not I like how you guys flip flip spots that was pretty cool so if we turn our camera off we can flip around hey we just discovered something that's gonna be pretty cool (laughs) (laughs) oh god okay number four the u which i don't like miami yes that's the worst fucking helmet that's the worst helmet in all of college football fuck that helmet yeah i agree (laughs) he loves you like fuck do you agree jeffrey it's a top. It, it's lower. It's a top ten, though. I do. I kind of like that. Really, I top ten. But wow. no way any of these should be above Michigan. No way any of them. Okay, should be. number three, Notre Dame. That should I be like, two. I like yeah, two. I Mich- totally Michigan agree. Michigan then Notre two. Dame. Michigan. Totally Notre Dame. agree. Should be two. Number two, Penn State. No, well, no. we know these next two. Fuck both of them. I yes. mean that that like. That's not even Pop Warner football. That's like fucking uh, that's like, five-year-old football. It's like going to Dick's Sporting Goods and buying a helmet. And there's a white helmet. Oh, look, it's Penn State. Yeah, and they said, look, guys, we, we could splurge a little on this helmet, so we put a blue stripe on it. You cool with that? Fucking cool. fuck that helmet. That, that's dumb. That's not even a top. That's not a top 50 helmet. No. I agree. And number one, the Buckeyes. <laughs> it's so stupid it's funny it's so it is, stupid it's funny i think it's because there's pot leaves on it and that's what some some guy smoking dope said it's how can you one. how can you say a helmet that has no logo on it if if you don't have a any kind of logo on your helmet you don't deserve to be in the top 10 no there's no, nothing on it over mike there's it's only, silver Mike. Hey, yeah, so is the Lions, and it has a fucking it's lion silver on there. Mike. <laughs> Mike, but it's silver. Yeah. So, wait, it's scarlet and gray. No, it's you have it's, it's not scarlet and gray, stripes. guys, because you have a fucking silver helmet, you numb nuts. That's not gray, it's called silver. <laughs> Assholes. And those are not numb nuts, those are buckeyes. Buck Coming nuts. Up. Yes. Yeah. So needless to say that whoever came up with this um, is a graduate of Ohio State, either a graduate of Ohio State or has uh, he's working at McDonald's. Hates Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, my opinion, there's one team that wasn't even mentioned in this that's got even a better helmet than most of those people that we just talked about. Where's Arizona State? Yeah. Yeah, Where's Michigan State? Where's Michigan, Michigan State? Where's, Michigan, where's Michigan State with the old uh, Spartan on the side yeah. of the helmet? Yeah. Ohio yeah, State doesn't it? even have the best helmet in Ohio. Cincinnati's is better than Ohio State. 100%. I don't think Cincinnati's Ohio got State. nice uniforms, <laughs> nice colors. Penn State, Penn State and Ohio State have the two worst helmets besides Maryland in the Big Ten. That's, yeah. Yeah, well, a lot of good that helmet did Dwayne Haskins. Boom, another callback. <laughs> oh, he pulled out the Dwayne Haskins. Maybe, he, oh. maybe if he was wearing his helmet when he crossed the street, he'd be alive. Oh, God. Oh, my God. We're all going to hell. <laughs> Just saying. I don't know. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh That's my a Michigan God. hater. That, 
that's a Michigan hater all day that wrote that article. Right. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It, there, as far as I'm, and, and the thing is, is a lot of people, and, and I know that Rob knows this and, and I'm sure Mike does, and I'm sure you do too, Jeff, is the Michigan helmet's not actually blue. It's actually yellow and the blue yep. is actually painted, painted on the helmet. Yeah, it's yellow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, Rob, I want to go back because now the story I had heard, but see, now I could be, I could be mistaken was Michigan was the first football program to actually have put anything on their helmet. And that was a uh, Fritz Chrysler. So, so they knew which guys the were on their team. Yeah. 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 It's so I had a book about Michigan football and that was in there, that article, like Michigan was, and I just saw this on a 30 for 30 on college football. You know, the first three teams to play football were three Ivy League schools in the East. The first team, which they called the West, was Ohio and Michigan. That was the West back then. Michigan was the first or organized program in a college to take a team to the East to go play people. Then they didn't even pass the ball. Back then, it was a kicking and punching the ball type of league. They didn't even have a run or a pass. Michigan was the first team to develop a forward pass. So Fritz Chrysler wanted his quarterback. And, and, and back then, it wasn't even called the quarterback. It was the halfback that threw the ball to, to identify receivers downfield. So that's why they did it. Wow. Now, listen, that was in a Michigan historical book that I owned and I read a couple times. If I'm mistaken, maybe someone knows a different story, but that's what was in the, the book I had. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a lot of Michigan hate out there. And, and it comes well, from it, it, it comes from the football program. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, it's it now it comes from that. It it's, comes with the fact that, you know, Jim Harbaugh's, you know, caused such a stir over the last few years. And of course, the you know, and of course every every college football fan thinks that that the Michigan fans are elitist and we only live in the past. And I'm like well, you know what? You, if that, if you, if you, you want to say that, sure, I'll go right ahead. Doesn't change the fact that we're still Michigan fans, and the fact is, is everybody's like, oh, uh, you know, Michigan wants as many fans as they possibly get. If you're a Michigan State fan, they don't want you to be a fan of their school unless you go there. It's a true statement. Yep. I worked with many people that were Michigan State grads, and they flat out told me that. I was like, and you, and they call the Michigan program elitist. I mean, come on, that that's textbook elitist right there. Right. So crazy. I still think they should have been higher on the list for helmets, though. Oh yeah, Michigan State wasn't even Michigan top State, twenty-five. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, Michigan State needs to be up in that for sure. Yeah. No doubt. I mean, if Arizona you're gonna, if you, sure. I mean, if you, yeah, if you're gonna, Fresno have US, State. We talked Fresno State. I love that bulldog. On the bulldog. Yeah. State you know, mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, if you if you think about it too, is if if you're gonna have the USC Trojans helmet, why wouldn't you have the Spartans helmet? It, that's what I was saying to Rob yesterday. They're very yeah. similar, right? This the well, at least you think their best helmets is with with the old. Uh, um, Uh, got a text? Are we interrupting you? <laughs> oh God! <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, ADHD. Sorry. Yep, I do a squirrel. It was. <laughs> it, it, Are we it, interrupting it, you? It, it was. It was Shrek. No, it's a lefty. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. I thought he fell asleep. <laughs> I'm like, man. I, I know we're that. boring, but Jesus sorry, Christ. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, that was a good topic. Uh, Jeff, yep. you got another one for us? Yeah, well, timeline? so I'm going to throw this at you guys. So you're <laughs> my age range. So I'm just going to ask you this question and think about it for a second. Hey, so before you hey, before you get done. We don't that, think about anything. Before nope. I, is it me or does okay. Jeff look like Dr. Evil? <laughs> <laughs> I like how he weighs, how, he weighs like how a metric camera... ton. I his like name. how the camera with the background is trying to trying <laughs> yeah. to line him up, so it looks like he's dancing. It's like <laughs> yeah, look at look at look, yeah, look at right. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> all right, so this is my question. I know I'm I am jumping all over the place. Sorry, guys. I'm in yeah. My you're job. fitting right in. We do this. Yeah. 
I so you all graduated eighties with me. Yeah. Or you know, around the same time. In your lifetime, what is the biggest thing that has changed in this world? So we talked about, so think about a little bit. We talked about, you know, baseball, right? We talked about three growing up, we had a ton of three thousand hit guys or guys that were now there's none, right? I know from Fred's standpoint, growing up, we you could have gave us an NBA team. We probably could have named off their whole roster. I don't know if I could name you 20 guys that are in the NBA right now. Things have changed so much over the years. So just not just sports, sports, is this topic just sports or anything? Anything, just anything. What do you think has changed the world from a Rob that was 18 to a Rob that's in his fifties, I was just, yeah, yeah. Good point. The cell phone. A thousand. I'm so tied to this thing. Let me give you an example. Well, Back Fred just first... gave us an example, like thirty seconds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me let me, give, let me give you another example. When I first got my first cell phone, I left that motherfucker everywhere because it wasn't a part of who I am. When I would travel places, like my wallet and my keys. Now I'm more apt to lose my fucking wallet and my keys versus my cell phone. This thing never leaves my sight or my hand at all times. Well, I, I agree. I totally agree. That is probably the, the biggest, but the three things that have changed that I've seen, uh, television doesn't have any more good sitcoms on it anymore. Like they did back in, back in when we were in, growing up, like we're talking like the love boat, fantasy Island, Dukes of hazard, mash um uh, different strokes facts happy. of life happy days laverne and shirley you know any of those type of, they don't have any different of those strokes and happy days yeah. and they all had good yeah. sexual in in your yeah. window yeah. Freeze company freeze company i was just going to say that <laughs> eight is eight is enough you know you know you, go, you can even talk about brady bunch and all that stuff back in the day okay mm-hmm. that that's one the other thing mtv went from being one of the greatest stations ever to one of the shittiest ever because it, it all everything turned reality and I loved I loved watching all the videos and and learn and finding the, all these new songs and you don't and, like reality TV though well yeah, well that's what I just said I, I don't watch it anymore uh, and you're right Jeff the NBA um, I used to follow the NBA uh, but after Larry Bird retired uh, that league is nothing but a dumpster fire they keep saying that it's it's better. It's and it's getting better, and in my opinion, that league couldn't get any worse. It has more. There's more people watching soccer and lacrosse than there is watching the NBA. And even though they claim that they have a big, a big uh, uh, fan base, I think it's I think it's all a crock of shit. Yeah, and, and it one is more thing that changed too. This the way this world is. Yoga pants. <laughs> God damn, Rob. It's, hey, hey, when For you're right, matter. you're right. When you're right, For you're right. But wow, man, how, yoga pants are just a spandex of the you know the the 21st century. Yeah, it's like the Zumba. They show so much more though. I don't They're know, like a lighter material that uh, yoga pants are like insane. Thongs, <laughs> thongs too. Yeah, thong bathing suits. Those I don't were. think that's really changed the world, guys. But okay, it changed my world. It changed my world. Changed my world. Yeah, that's true. I mean, just uh, I would say, I would say, com- I'm, along with the cell phone thing, but computers and the internet. I mean, without the internet, cell phones don't have the don't have the effect. You know, I mean, so you, you have to have the combination. Would have discovered it, we would be out of out of correct. Shit. Yeah, exactly. Well, not to mention the fact that this show would not exist. Right. Thank, <laughs> thank, <laughs> thanks, Al Gore, for that for, for <laughs> yeah, developing right. the, yeah. the internet. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I mean, cell phone. I, I'm I'm shocked that the first cell phone you had, Rob, would you could actually hold it in your hand because the first phone I had was that stupid ass bag phone. Oh that, my God. <laughs> that that now here's why i bought it i bought it because tammy was pregnant with our first daughter and i was traveling all over the place so i had that cell phone in case i needed you know she needed to get a hold of me but 
you could only use it in the car, I think. Or no, it had, it actually had a plug where I could plug it into the hotel room or whatever. But yeah, yeah I, I remember Jeff it works, being like yeah. 45 cents a minute to call in that stupid thing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now Jeff, Jeff works for AT&T. So fill us in. Uh, give us a history lesson here, Jeffrey. Correct. You yeah. were there. I think you were there during the time. I think that's when you well, were. Well, you and I were at a Maritech. Yeah, you had a bad phone, which actually did have, that was actually at the time, huge tech, technology because it actually had a big seal lead acid battery. So you could take it in. But yeah. like you said, the plans were like, they give you five minutes a month and then it was 50 cents a minute for everything you use. The phone looked like this. Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It actually had the, the reg, mine had the regular handset. It was basically like, your home phone, but in a bag. Yeah. Right. Yep. And, it, and it had a little antenna that you had to flip yeah. open on. Looked like it a was, bat phone. It was stupid, but it yeah. worked. So, I mean, I'm just surprised yeah. that Rob didn't have a bag phone. No, I didn't. I mean, we sales, but we didn't have, yeah. I had pagers. We had pagers, right? So we had pagers first. And then when I got my first phone, it was like, I'm, I'm saying it was probably late. The size of Merlin. Well, it was like this, you know, this is my glass case. It was kind of like this, maybe a little bit bigger. And it was just cumbersome. Maybe a little bit bigger. Had, little, had the little <laughs> antenna. Um, yeah, shake, right? yeah, keep He's bouncing like, like that, Rob. A little bigger. A little bit bigger. Maybe a little What is he doing over there? Never know what he's what doing he back, back there. Yeah, Jesus. What is he doing back there? He's, I don't know. He's jerking himself a soda. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Dream what story. about you, Jeff? What did uh, what did you what is the one that you're thinking? Well, the first phone I had was the bag phone, but to go back to that, I, I think you're right. I think it's I Mike, I think you hit it. I think it's the internet more than the phones because the internet is really what connected everybody yeah. to each other. But now I want to go to the next to my next subject, and we're gonna get a little deeper here. So oh, how cool. is it? That we all have all these phones, we have all this technology at our fingertips, yet when you talk to people now, opinions are so far apart between right and left. We've got all So this you're saying thing. we're supposed to connect us, communicate more. Wow, that is deep. separated us. It has is turned, deep. Yes, it has. It's turned. So people, you know, so... I, I'm going to give you, I'll give you a prime example and then I'll kind of turn it over and give me your thoughts. So more crim channel four, which is why I was going to, I, I knew I was going to bring this up. So watch my dad, watch channel four for years. Okay. More crim Carmen Harlan every night, six o'clock. Right. So now I'm on Facebook and I follow more crim and more crim is, is far left politically than you would ever know, which, you know, I'm, I'm I'm right center. He's like Mike. He was yeah. like Mike. Yeah. Well, he's he's very left, and I and you know what? And I sent him a message because he's he actually debates politics a lot, and he gets into it. And I sent him a message, and it was cool. He sent me a message back. I said, I gotta, you know what? I gotta thank you. Up until I had you on Facebook, I never knew which way you lean politically. You just sat there every night and gave me the news. And mm -hmm. my family trusted Probably the you. idea, huh? Yeah, yeah a... and they love you. <laughs> yeah. And I and I said, I said, I saw honestly, I you're probably thinking I'm taking a shot at you. I'm not. I think that's awesome because yeah, you don't agree with a lot of what I agree with, and I don't agree with a lot, but guess what? You were a trusted, valuable source of information for me for years. And now here we are, we have all this technology in our hands. Yeah, we're as far apart as we've ever you been. What, though, Mike, Mike, you and I like to do political banter, right? We, we like to yeah. deep about something. He's bringing up a good point because there used to be a time a journalist actually cared about that responsibility to have the trust of the people that would just deliver the news, not slanted, not jaded, not with a hidden agenda. Where did that go away? I mean, that has, he's right. That's gone. That's nowhere. In I think it's, uh, I personally think it's by design because what they, what, what the media has done and what, you know, people in general 
we've we've proven it on this show already we have short attention spans right so uh -huh. there's a lot of information but people are very superficial and they don't dig any deeper than the headline and they see the headline and that headline is that's the truth right there what i read is the truth but you go to a different paper or a different website the same event has a different headline a different spin on it so people don't dig deep and that's why we don't connect people don't talk on the phone anymore they text no. on the phone they're on facebook messenger doing that both people don't even fucking type texts anymore they just talk into their phone and send you know there's no there it's like a very passive participation in society because that that's what's going on is people are not actively involved so they don't have real conversations when we we're in school we'd have conversations or you go out to dinner and have conversations with people or go to the bar and, and people don't do that anymore they would they would rather text each other and right. you know if i see something on a website i read you know three sentences and man that's the truth to me and now i'm going to tell everybody and and they do and i've watched several documentaries about how the internet and search engines work Mm -hmm. When you search something, they're constantly pushing you information that agrees with what you believe based on what you search on the internet. So you, they steer All you the, down that path. It's an algorithm, right? Al it's yeah, a algorithm. Algorithms. They yeah. steer you down that path. Yeah. So if you so, are searching so yeah, a certain so, thing. Yeah. So if, yeah. Mike goes on, if Mike goes on the internet right now and goes look up Gibson guitars, he'll he'll get an email or he'll get a message on Facebook or something. You know, it'll, it'll be talking about Gibson guitars. Yeah. I can go yeah. on Google right now, go to Gibson website. I'll go on Facebook and I'm scrolling through. Guess what? There's a Gibson ad yep. right in my Facebook. And this is yep. all by design. So you don't get other opinions because they're people don't have to search for information anymore. It's delivered to them. And they're delivering information to you that they want to deliver to you. So wait a minute, wait a minute. Let Jeff, just so let's circle back what he just said. Kind of what Mike is saying and Fred kind of alluded to it and we kind of touched on it just a moment ago. We're being radicalized, right? We're being brainwashed. Yeah. In some sense, we are being brainwashed to think or act or respond a certain way. Yeah. It, yeah, we're being manipulated. Mike, I'll go back even to your algorithm. Uh, it, I think it was a Netflix show, and I, I can't remember the name of it. Mm -hmm. But not only will they throw those ads up, what they'll do is if you're on Facebook and they want you to stay on Facebook, they'll start throwing suggestions to you. Yeah. yeah. You know, yep. I like boxing and UFC. If I'm getting ready, it, and it, it works, all the, I see it all the time. As soon as I've had enough of Facebook, I'll scroll down a little bit. Up, oh, there's some UFC videos. I gotta watch that. Oh, there's a boxing video. I gotta watch that. Yeah, it's, yeah, it is. It is. It's a manip. It, it is. It's a manipulation. Yes. I it's agree, a, and I also think that the the internet and the phones that we use have also turned not just us, but our kids into homeschool kids, where they're just they they don't know how to communicate. They don't know how to uh, engage no in a conversation. No, yeah, social, no socialization. No, no, no chance to really converse. You know, you, you you get people that talk on the phone. They talk for about three minutes and they're already annoyed and they want to hang up. Um, so, just to give you an example, <clears throat> um, somebody we know, he was walking down the hallway with his daughter at Marine City High School, <clears throat> and coming this way was a was a girl that was on his daughter's softball team. And he said, hi, to, he said, hi to her. And, and his daughter didn't say anything as they passed. And he looks at her um, cause she was on her phone and, and she goes, he goes, Hey, didn't you just see Ruthie? <coughs> he goes, why didn't he want you to say hi? Pulls her phone up, pulls Ruthie up and says, Hey, you just walked by me. Hi. Yeah. And he and he he went and he grabbed the phone. He goes, "If you ever fucking do that again, I'll shove that phone so far up your ass, you'll have to push your nose to turn it back on." It, well, I mean, that's, 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 a, that's a good a, parenting uh, skill. Well, but, well, mean, here's the you you make a great point though. I mean, 
I like to call the youth that don't engage with us, like wherever they make fun of us in these commercials, like the waiter doesn't need to know your name. That's all about socialization, <laughs> socialization and skills. It's oh, like, they're great listen, commercials. Why don't they engage with people with that? It's an intimacy that we get away from intimacy because we feel like it's bad, but it's not. It's how we group together as a society. It's how we, you brought it up, Jeff, perfectly. We're so far this way in politics and that way, it's not good for anybody, right? We can't communicate. We take information from one side and one side only. That doesn't help us as a society. No, and that's the other thing. It, it's so divisive. And like you said, right? That, that far, you're far right, you're far left. The truth is if people would just come together and talk, like we did back in the 80s, in the 70s, where you would go visit relatives and right, your mom and dad made you talk, they'd ask questions, they made you answer, they made you say please, they made you say thank you. 99% of what everybody argues about politically, it, di it divides themselves. It was ready to divide the whole country over. You could come together and you wouldn't agree, but you would come to some sort of a happy median. But yeah. it's it, yeah, we don't have that. There's no no, no, no. It's either it's either right or wrong. It's black and white, and you are right or left. <clears throat> and the unfortunate thing is, um, you can't you can never get those two groups to to act uh, act like adults. Um, they act I think like little, they act like little is, children. We as the people need to break these barriers that they're they're trying. We got to break us. the habits. Right. And we need to come together as a people to say, listen, this is the happy medium. We don't want to hear from this far left side or this far right side. This is the happy medium. This is what's good for middle America. Us. Is that what you're saying, Jeff? That's exactly. No, yeah. that's exactly it. So so I'm going to throw that all in. And I've kind of been thinking about this all day. So one thing that that my kids told me and they were like, don't do it, dad. Don't do it. I got a TikTok account. All right. I don't know if you guys have TikTok. I'm addicted but to TikTok. Video. I'm addicted. No, oh, I don't have it. That, and that's why they told me. They said, don't do it. You'll never get off your phone. And guess what? They were right. I I will wake up at 11 at night and be like, man, I can't really sleep. I'll be on TikTok. Next thing I know, it's two in the morning and I'm just scrolling through video. Yeah. But there was a great video. It's addictive. It, it is addictive, and it's the same thing, going back to the algorithm, right? It's you, They know what I like, so, oh, hey, he's, he's been stopping and watching these pimple popper videos. He's slowing up a little bit. Let's get Fred him a likes pimple those popper too. video. <laughs> yeah, Fred, I, that's a callback to last week, Fred. Yeah, really see? Think. Look at this guy, huh? All right. So our, our, I don't have TikTok either, but they're real either short. They're short videos, right? They're seconds. Yeah. They're not even yeah. a minute, right? Yeah, yeah, no, they actually go like up to three minutes. I oh, really? They go up, yeah. And so, so and they're great. They're yeah, so great that, videos. That's their it's they're focusing that so that you you're constantly barraged with information and in just short bursts, like because it's people are getting like right, exactly. They're get you're more more and more you're getting short attention spans for people. I mean, it's affecting us. Even us, it's help. It's happening to us, and we weren't brought up that way. We had, you know, we didn't have this kind of shit when we were younger. But it's no. affecting us. So yeah. imagine what it's doing to our kids, and you know, their kids. Even it's it's going to be crazy. Hey, I mean, we never you... had school shootings when we were in school. That never no. fucking we had school happened. School fist fights. We had fist fights. Correct. And you know what? the teachers could get involved and teachers could actually do something. Now teachers get, you know, and this happened at my, uh, my sister's school, they get, you know, punched in the face. They get spit on. They can't do anything about it. They can't do a damn thing. They can't even defend themselves just or ridiculous. they'll get, they'll get fired. That's fucking stupid, man. That's, it's that terrible. is crazy. And you know, these there's no it's no coincidence that these school shootings are happening because you know, the, and you it's hear because all the of time. the internet exactly. All these they're people, loners, all these people they, they play games, they're on the well, internet all the time. Yeah. They, you know, the parents 
give them a fucking device and boom, they can sit there for eight hours or, you know, up all, you know, their parents go to bed and they're up till four in the morning looking up shit on the internet and nobody pays any fucking attention. That's what's happening. Yeah. Not to mention a bunch of cowards who uh, like to cyber bully and hide hide their identity and, and attack people. Yeah. And you wonder why there's teen suicide, well, when we were a- young, anxieties, you know, all we these, young, all, all this stuff. It's the crazy. The playground, the common areas were kind of like, you know, a prison yard. I mean, you didn't have to assert, you had to act a certain way. If you stepped out of line, you had a chance of getting your ass beat by a couple of people. And <laughs> that's just how, it, how things were policed. It's kind of like the NHL, Fred, right? When you had the bullies out there protecting the young guys. There was less problems on the ice. Now there's all kinds of issues on the ice because they protect these little yeah. cheap shot areas. And that's yep. what they're doing in schools. They're checking. Yep, and that's why you see a lot of stick injuries because of, because yeah. of, because of it. So, yeah. Friend, Imagine like Gordy Howe. Back to the NHL. If somebody would have slashed Gordy Howe back in the 50s, what would Gordy Howe have done to them? Destroy their, their face. Ass. Yeah. And if not started. him, Ted Lindsay or someone else on the team would. Right. Yep. Over and over and over again. So, yeah. so that was kind of my, that was kind of, and it kind of went the way I thought. So I watched the TikTok. It was a guy named Alonzo Bowden. He's a comedian. And he, he uh-huh. broke it down and it all came together for me. He said, you know what the difference is when I was a kid? There were people <laughs> that knew shit. And they would tell you about this shit they knew. And everybody kind of <laughs> laughed. <laughs> That's funny. But then he would say, the people that didn't know shit knew when to, to shut up. Not say shit. The people that knew shit. And he would say, and eventually it would come around and that person that didn't know anything would say, hey, I know some of that shit. It was kind of a funny bit, but there's so much truth to it. Because as we sit here and we talk about this, everybody has their own form of communication. And, and again, going right back to the NHL and Gordy Howe, there's no accountability for it. So you can have your opinion based off the two minutes you see, because like Mike said, they're trying to feed you what you want to see. And you think, you know, but you don't know. So I, I think of that a lot with my kids and as, you know, as, as, people grow up so listen well you got 36 you... viewers know when you know shit and tell people what you know and love and if you don't know shit keep your mouth shut and listen well you make a good point because back in the day we learned and respect from our elders whether it was your parents your grandparents or uncles and aunts you really respected their opinions, then you would go and cite those p- opinions back to your friends, right? And mm-hmm. learn from what their parents had to sh- share about their lives, their family, their values. Right. Now we've, we've let these little kids become because the computer age taught them they knew more than the parents, right? So that's the thing that, that, that has gone away, that respect value. So they just think they know everything and the parents don't anything. And now they really don't know anything because they read now the crap that you were just saying a moment ago in TikTok and our media, that's all slanted in one direction and not the truths, not the values that we're trying to teach our young people. But yeah, here's, you... here's the dangerous part. We know that you can't really trust the media, right? Because you watch, right. you watch one state, you watch CNN and they say something, you watch Fox and they say something, even if it's the same story, they have different slants on it, right? We know, oh, yeah. we know enough to realize that, yeah. but there's a lot of people, a lot, there's a lot more that mm-hmm. just watch CNN because CNN is the truth to them. And they right. just watch Fox because Fox is the truth to them and they don't want to hear otherwise. There's way more people like that in our society than us oh, yeah. that would say, you know what? We can't trust what either side is saying. You take, you gotta, and it's sad because to go back to Jeff's point about Mort Krim, we never knew what, what side, you know, that they never had like a, a political lean when we were growing up, they just reported the news and whether you watch two, four or seven, they all had the same basic fucking story. The reason why you watched was for the personalities. You liked this 
this uh, uh, anchor better than this anchor, but they're basically saying the same thing. You can't say that anymore on these on TV. No, you're right. Mike, when I'm walking down the sidewalk and I see a gentleman, I'll say, how are you doing today? Uh, bad day. I always look at him and say, turn the channel three channels over. It'll get better. <laughs> exactly. It's true. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, yeah. it's sad, but it's, 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 it's funny. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. There's a couple of things that, that you really notice. You say hi to somebody and they look at you like, 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 what the hell are you saying hi to me for? You see that a lot. But what you, what I do Anytime I see a, a woman that's leaving a store, I open up the door and I hold it open for them. And they can't look, believe look underneath they, her dress. Is that what you're no, doing? they can't. They can't believe that um, that I, I was doing. I'm doing that. And they go right. and they go. Wow. They go. Wow. There's there, there still are some gentlemen out there. And I'm and I and I and I learned that from my you know my dad. And but you know if I acted like the the way the kids today act to my dad. And we all know how, how much of a man my dad was. He would destroy me. Yeah, I mean. Destroyed. And it's not just kids that are like that. I mean, I, I can't count how many times I've walked into a store or whatever, and the person opens the door just enough for them to slide in. And then oh, I, yeah. got, I'm, I, I always say before the door closes, thank you. And I fucking open the door. Like, come on. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. It's just fucking respect. Right. When, right. Whenever I leave or, or I enter a building, I always look over my shoulder to see if somebody's I do, behind me. I do me. too. And if I they are, too. I stop and I hold the door and wait for them. Or sometimes I'll turn and, and go back out and hold the door open for them. No, that's that's a lost fucking uh, that's lost etiquette, and it's Jenny, not just kids. Have you ever that noticed the person that's always demanding they need, want respect as the person that also never gives respect? Absolutely. Yeah, they're they're called hypocrites. Yeah. 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 And a lot of that, too, it comes from, you know, we talk about that. I mean, I travel all over the state. I go to stores and that's a lot of what what I talk about, what I teach is how you take care of people that come into the store. And the one Customer thing I service. preach. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing I preach and, and it's. It's tough sometimes is look, when, when you're done with the customer, you walk them through the door, meaning you walk them out and you get the door for them. And I always hear this because, because you, you do have to kind of make it a habit. Oh, it just feels so weird. And I, mm -hmm. and I tell, I tell the reps that work for me, you know why it feels weird is because people aren't used to people being nice. That's true. why it feels exactly. weird. Exactly. It's, it's true. That's why it feels weird. And you know, it, like for us, we're all older guys. We're in our 50s. So it's easy for us to say, well, it's these kids. But sometimes it's it's Talking us. Kids. Sometimes it's us not holding the kids accountable and not teaching those kids. Those oh, problems. yeah. We're more, we're part of the, the – we we own the responsibility to teach the youth that. Yes. Absolutely. Well, right. customer service is a lost art. No, no question. Well, it's you know, like the hey, bunch I'm going to throw baseball. a call back out to you, Jeff. <laughs> Uh, he was eating Chick-fil-A at the beginning of the episode. You, you go into a Chick-fil-A and they treat you like fucking royalty, man. They treat you like royalty. It's a consistent experience. Every time you go to Chick-fil-A, nobody's in a bad fucking mood. They're real. They're chipper. They got a smile on their face. They always say my pleasure when, you know, hey, thank you. My pleasure. You know, it's the little things They're That's how they're trained. And it, and you notice that, and that's why you fucking go back. And that's why I'll go back to Chick Fil A and pay three dollars more for a meal than than going somewhere else because they're they're nicer. McDonald's so is a consistent experience for most McDonald's, but you know it, the customer service is pretty. You know, in all uh, honesty, it's pretty much dead. It is. I mean, well, it, yeah. Not only is it dead, but you see with a lot of those, with a lot of these companies now, not only is it dead, like McDonald's, heck, you don't even need, you don't even need to go and, and talk to somebody at a counter now. Yeah. You don't need to talk to anybody at a counter. You just go well, put the, your well, in. Everybody yeah. is trained. If I were to teach customer service skills to retail, which I think I could really, cause I'm in sales. I, I pride myself on my customer service is that they are so 
looking forward to tell the customer no. That's their number one thing. Like they want to tell you no. They look on a computer. They'll look anywhere to tell the customer no. Where in our day it was the customer never hears a no. Right. Most of the best customer service training at one time out of the West Coast anyway came from Nordstrom. Nordstrom's was known as the best in customer service. A lot of companies adopted their training programs for that. They used to train that one location that Nordstrom sat on. This was in somewhere in the Valley. Used to be a tire center, you know, like where you go get your tires changed. And this old guy came in to a Nordstrom's with a tire and said, I want a refund on this tire. It's no good. And the lady behind the counter, and this is a true story. And this is how Nordstrom did their training. I said, well, sir, we're Nordstrom's. We don't have tires. He's like, I bought the tire at this address, you know, like a year ago. And this tire is bad. They refunded him his money. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that's a good business decision, but that's the kind of customer service. I bet you, on, I, bet you they, I bet you he comes back there to do other things then. Yeah. exactly and that was the whole point is like listen right. you don't tell someone no you know you tell you figure out a solution to help them that skill is lost in retail business corporate america you know whatever you want and like look at you don't want to tell look for a way to tell a customer no i don't know i just i i it just boggles my mind when i see right that. yeah great subjects guys good yeah. show Good show. Man, I love having a guest on. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I enjoyed it, guys. I really enjoyed it. But yeah, your customer service, it is a lost art. So that's my message. Get off your phones and start loving each other a little bit more. We got to talk show to our producer, respect. Ruth, and see what she thinks about this show. Um, having you on, Jeff. You brought provided a lot of good value today, man. It was really good. Good Jeff, we'd, lo we'd love to invite you back uh, for uh, some more episodes. Oh, I'll be back anytime. I'll be back, and I'm always going to smash the like button for you guys every episode. Nice, <laughs> man. Nice. We love That's to so hear nice. that. <laughs> and we're taking over Elginac, boys. Get we're ready. So Storming Elginac. We are, we are not draining the swamp. We're filling the fucking filling the, swamp. Oh, That's we right. Are, we are. We yeah, are boy. feeling that motherfucker. Yeah. I, I think we're going to at least two views from Elginac. I wish there was some metric that I could see. There is going to be some discussion Elginac. in Elginac about the idiot circle tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. It might be and the turnaround. Life, but still, there's going to be discussion. <laughs> from <laughs> Zeph's, Zeph's Tavern all the way to Snoopy's and everywhere in between. Wow. He covered oh. the whole fucking town. The whole town. <laughs> Nice. Nice. Terrence, right, I appreciate guys. you guys having me. It was fun. Oh, yeah, oh, absolutely. Great, man. Thanks, man. We really appreciate it. Yep. And like, right. hey, like always, guys, we, we really appreciate you watching the show. Jeff, hey, thanks for being a supporter and, and coming on the show this week. You know, Mike, Mike and Rob, great, great subjects and great, uh, great opinions. Hey, remember, go on our Facebook page and uh, give us any opinions or you know, answer some of the questions that we talked about today, even uh, throw some other uh, topics out there, you know, talk about Chick-fil-A or yeah. Talk if about you're watching Chick-fil-A. Yes. Give us a call. Yes. <laughs> you talk? Dennis Sampier. Well, come on, come through big guy. Hey, and you know, to talk to you guys. We fulfilled Jeff's lifelong dream to be on a podcast. So we're like fucking make a wish foundation up in this bitch. Hey. Oh, That's man. right. We, we are like That's make right. A wish, I tell you. So is it now? Is it is it Jeff tough now? Is it yeah. Chad tough? <laughs> That's right. Where's Barry? I Jeff. was told Barry Sanders is going to give me a, a signed football. Where's Barry Sanders? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, yeah, they were going to get. Hey, no, they were going to no, get no. you. They said they had, you had to go to this link, and you ended up on our no, show. No, no, no. <laughs> we said you were going to get an autograph from Mary Sanders. Lives yeah, Mary. Street in, in Martin, yeah, Mary. In City. You're oh. going to get her autograph. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, she'll give you she'll give you her autograph all actually right. we're gonna give it you know, from charlie sanders yeah. <laughs> larry sanders yeah how about colonel no not colonel sanders we want chick-fil-a yeah Chick yes yeah, 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 yeah. if you're listening oh my Chick god he's already talking about the competition yeah see okay what about Deion sanders 
<laughs> there's a lot of famous Sanders. What about Sanders ice cream at Saunders? Oh, but anyway, yeah, close yeah. enough. Right. What about That's Scott Sanders, Sanders of Sin, former pitcher of the Chicago Cubs? Oh, yeah. Scott Sanderson. <laughs> 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 Brings up six to Lescano. <laughs> oh we'll be on till midnight if we start this yeah i know <laughs> hey boys hey like i said hey great to have a great show today hey guys uh check out our uh on youtube as well you know you know give us your opinions and stuff jeff hey thanks for coming on the show we look forward to having uh having you on the next time and uh boys hey you have a great night good seeing you guys all right peace out go tigers thanks, Go draft tomorrow night. Dra yeah. Go we Lions. need to talk about the draft. Don't get us started. Go yeah. Lions. Oh, my God, no. 